Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Threat Gen Red vs. Blue Let's Play. It is Wednesday, and every Wednesday morning, we come to you live playing Threat Gen's Red vs. Blue in a variety of different ways. Threat Gen Red vs. Blue is a cybersecurity simulation uh, platform that allows you to do many, many different things. Uh, playing as a red team operator against an active adversary AI blue team operator, playing as a blue team operator against an active adversary AI red team or doing tabletop exercises. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you in the next hour, we are going to be going through the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform, operating as a blue team operator and implementing a security framework called CIS-18. This used to be known as the SANS-20, then CIS took over and it was the CIS-20 and then they've consolidated it down to 18. My name is Gerald Ozier. I've been a cybersecurity practitioner for over 20 years and I've implemented many different frameworks. GRC is my background, which is where the frameworks kind of live and exist. And I have, uh, uh, I've implemented the CIS 18 multiple times. I'm very, very familiar with it. It's going to be a great show. Uh, we will be playing on the platform. You will get to see how Threat Gen's Red versus Blue can help you learn, skill up, and test different, uh, I, you know, a t a strategies, if you will, on protecting your critical assets. But as a viewer, as a member of the stream. What you're really going to get in addition to that is understanding CIS and how you can implement it in your organization and also how you can use Threat Gen Red versus Blue to test out whether you want to do NIST CSF, Australia, Essential 8, or the CIS 18. I do want to say what's up to Michael Jeffries, not only IT, Kerry, IO, Shane Himes, the whole crew. I see you guys all here. We are uh, coming to you live from Simply Cyber's channel as well as the Threat Gen uh, streams both on YouTube and LinkedIn. So wherever you are, I genuinely appreciate you spending a bit of your day with us. Let's go hop into the game, shall we? All right, it's going to be just me today. So I will be hosting, driving, piloting educating training and handling the music so do grant me some grace if we do run into some technical issues all right now let me share with you really quickly we're going to kind of do this a couple different ways um just by virtue of of <laughs> the limitations of the platform here let me let me do this and let me share with you the cis 18. Okay, so here we go. This is the CIS 18, and hopefully you can see it on stream without issue. You can see here, it is controls one through 18 as you would uh, expect it to be. And the way that we wanna implement this framework is sequentially. So control one is of more risk reduction value than control two, which is more reduction value all the way down to 18. So that means that you'd wanna implement one and two, three, before you do 18. Now, it is important to note here that you should not treat the CIS 18 as gates, right? It's not like here, going back to this page, it's not like you get control one inventory of uh, and control of all enterprise assets. You got all of them in place before you move on to inventory and control of software assets. This right here is the first uh, hurdle that you may want to overcome. If you think that you're supposed to wait until you do all of step one before you go on to step two, you are going to be gravely mistaken because you'll never achieve fully step one. All right. That's just a reality. People like Carl, they put shadow IT on your environment. Uh, systems go end of life. You do mergers and acquisitions, BYOD, 
new tech comes in, R&D department, they're like, ooh, like check this out. A vendor comes in and adds a piece of equipment to a manufacturing solution. There is infinite examples of how this thing can go sideways. So do not think that you need to do it fully at the beginning. Now, what I will tell you is it is a little bit of a, um, a gut feeling, if you will, where you need to make an effort. <clears throat> you need to make an effort. You need to make a plan on how you're going to capture the inventory of those hardware assets. Begin doing that. And it really should be a life cycle where you know, <clears throat> you're either doing vulnerability scanning to discover assets, you're doing uh, change control to make sure that new assets aren't brought in unless you're uh, visible to those things, whatever it is, and then begin to move on to step two, step three, step four. Okay, let me just take a hot minute <clears throat> and kind of touch on each of these before we get into the platform. And if you have any questions in chat, do drop them. Uh, I am trying to watch chat as we go. Good morning, Peter Lake from Australia. It's nice to see you. Hey, Lane, Team Live, I do love it. So step one and step two, these uh, are control one and control two. You do have to remember, this is basically asset inventory. If you think about the NIST cybersecurity framework, function one is identify. You need to know what assets, whether they're hardware or software, are in your environment. I might even go as far as to say, what kind of people are in your environment too? Are there vendors? Are there contractors? Are there IT staff? Are there executives? Like you need to <clears throat> understand who needs access to what so you can make sure that that access is appropriate, limited, and not um, languishing. So step one and step two is really getting your arms around what the crap is in your environment. Step three is data protection. And this is around your basic controls around, you know, I would argue, um, encryption, and we can dig a little deeper later. Encryption, um, you know, media uh, protection, right? Are USB drives allowed? Do you wipe hard drives when you're done with them? Is anyone allowed access to any file share? Like th those type of things, right? Um, for a secure config, this is like standard, you know, like what's your Windows OS gold load look like? What patches? Are people required to patches? Are people allowed to have Android devices in your environment. That's what's going on here. Step five, account management. You might actually argue that step five is particularly important in a zero trust architecture environment, but that's account management. How do people, guys, basically at the end of the day, account management, how does someone get an account in your environment? What is the process? Is there an approval? How are credentials transmitted? If someone gets their email compromised? How do they reset their password? When someone leaves the organization, how do you decommission their access? How do you know <clears throat> if they had access to 50 cloud systems that you use and you don't use federated authentication, how do you know that you've disabled the access to all of those cloud solutions? Because surprise, surprise, the cloud, it's so awesome because you can access it from anywhere, but also the cloud, not so awesome because when someone leaves your company, if they still have access, they can access it from anywhere. Boom, roasted. So boom, I own you, Cloud. So anyways, account management, you want to be very, very mindful of. The next is access control. This is what you would think. Um, what, you know, like basically how long are the passwords? How long um, are session tokens allowed? Who, who allowed, you know, identity and access, right? Uh, continuous vulnerability management, VM, scans, patching, continuous monitoring, threat exposure, attack surface. That's what's going on in here. Audit logs, this is what you would think. Endpoints pushing telemetry to some type of SIM solution, log aggregation. We will get in there. This actually might be a, a shortcoming of the CIS guys because, <laughs> spoiler alert, if, we, if you're doing one through seven before you even get to eight, you, you don't have visibility into your environment, right? The SIM. Nine is email and web browser protections. This is e most notably email security gateway. Yes, Nightshade, I do heart NIST also. You know I'm going to try to jam in some NIST CSF love every chance I get. Malware defenses is EDR anti-malware. Data recovery would be business continuity related. I'm on uh, step 12 now. Network infrastructure, firewalls, you know, um, you know, network segmentation if you have it, VPN, uh, 13, network monitoring and defense. That's where we're talking network intrusion detection systems, typically uh, wireless security, typically. Uh, 14, security awareness and skill training. There's my jam. I'm a GRC evangelist. I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, security awareness. 
Guys, I'm going to be biased. I would put that way higher than 14 simply because it's so valuable to educate your staff on what to do, what to look for, to be mindful. They are they are champions in your environment. First of all, they're the ones that are going to be accidentally clicking on things, but they're also the person who are going to see weirdness long before you do. So you definitely need to educate your staff. 14 really should have happened way sooner. <laughs> Thanks, William Welch. I do love I do love the emotes from the squad mates. Um, the next one is service provider managed. That that would be third-party risk management. Um, we'll have to ask Neil Bridges if he thinks that 15 is too high for that one. Too low, I mean. Um, that's an inside joke with cyber insecurity. 16 is app software security. Now, uh, I'll just point out, typically when we secure an environment, we almost treat all the apps like black boxes, right? The app is the app is the app. I'm controlling, I'm configuring and controlling the endpoints. I'm configuring and controlling the network, um, operating system and lower. But guys, if you have an ERP system, right? If you have this like big honking thing that does user account management or um, finance, payroll, those applications, they're not black boxes. If people have unnecessary access to them, if third-party vendors, off-site people, non um, staff have access. That that's a that's a problem. We just read today in the news. If you join the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing this morning, that a email server open to uh, was accidentally open to the internet due to a misconfiguration. Now we do talk about email and web browser protections on number nine right here, but it's important to note that that email system is an application that needs to be figured all unto itself. So if you're not doing that you actually expose yourself to unnecessary risk and harm. Exactly, accounts payable uh, is a specific area in finance. That's where business email compromise typically happens, okay? Uh, the next one we have is incident response management. Again, way down the rope. Uh, this would be in the detect phase of the cybersecurity framework. So uh, let's throw some love to NIST CSF. And then finally, way down on the end is penetration testing. Also, since I'm thinking of it, shameless plug um for those who are interested i'm actually in a talk w on march 1st which would surprise many of you on penetration testing i'm partnering with paul imy from Ceteria on a talk for anti-siphon summit 2023 um which is a pen testing red engagement it is called my title of my talk or me and paul's talk is everything you didn't know you needed to know about pen testing and it really gets into like the business of pen testing and writing pen testing findings that actually help the CISO, how to sell pen testing to a CISO. If you're a CISO, what you should actually be looking for, for testing. Surprise, surprise. You're not just asking, you know, you know hey, does all your staff have OSCP? Because that does not necessarily map to uh, skilled uh, practitioners, right? But that's, that's just a shameless plug uh, around that. All right, so now that we've gone through the 18, if you have any questions, thank you, Jed Ray, for dropping that link in chat. Hey, Anthony, yeah, value pack. That's, that's what we're up to here. It's all about times. It's all about value. If you are getting value, take a hot minute, hit that like button. Um, yeet the like button. <laughs> and uh, my 10-year-old's my still trying to teach me how to use yeet correctly. I think I'm doing it wrong, but I digress. Okay, let's do this really quick, Ken. Uh, let me do this, and then let me do this, and then let me do. I'm gonna I'm gonna merge these two tabs so I can jump in between CIS 18 and the game itself. All right. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. We're about ready to l jump into the platform. This is Threat Gen Red versus Blue. If you have any questions, just ask in chat. I'll help or. Uh, the folks in chat can help, please. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. This is Threat Gen Red versus Blue. We're going to go in. We're going to hit play. We're going to do single play. We will play as the blue team. Actually, we're going to go to the main menu. I'm going to change the settings. I'm going to make the turns uh, 35. I have a hard stop at noon Eastern time. And it's more important to educate you on CIS 18 than it is uh, to, to win the game. I'm going to go ahead and hit play single. Play as a blue team. We will choose, let's choose the manufacturing plant. A little bit smaller map, but what I want to tell you guys, something that you should know, 
Something you should know is that CIS 18 as a framework is ideally suited for smaller businesses. I, I would argue 500 people and less businesses CIS 18 is great for. If you are a business, let's say you have a thousand people and or 1500, whatever, and you have no information security program, zero zilch, CIS 18 is pretty good. I, I would argue once you get like north of a thousand, you might want to consider NIST cybersecurity framework because it is scalable as your program matures. But at a minimum, um, CIS 18 is a fantastic option. And guys, if you don't have 20 years of experience, if you're relatively new to the game, if you've been, you are an IT person, all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're responsible for InfoSec, CIS 18, very digestible, very easy to measure against. Um, there's a lot, a lot of good to it, okay? I've gone ahead and selected the manufacturing. You can see um, the platform is game style. So there are win conditions, which you can see at the bottom here. We can eliminate all the vulnerabilities, increase our threat intelligence score to 100%, which means we've done forensics and discovered the bad guys, or we can outlast the red team. Again, we're interested in CIS 18. Okay, so step one of CIS 18 is asset inventory. Boom, baby, right here. Can we can we um can we see this right here? This is it right here. Asset inventory. You can see here we click on it, we get access to a wiki, which gives us some in-game usage and understanding of what's going on. Again, cybersecurity, um the platform does give you educational content around cybersecurity uh, concepts as well. So it's very useful if you're brand new uh to getting into that. Hey Philip Martin, good morning to you too. So we're gonna do asset inventory to align to um, the, the NIST CIS, uh, NIST CIS, listen to me, CIS 18. Uh, we are gonna do gateway firewall um, simply because, hold on one second. On the CIS 18, inventory, uh, hardware and software and do data protection. Okay, so let's, let's do that. I'm gonna, I am going to try my best to adhere Setting up the, the firewall would be a best practice, uh, but it's not quite there yet. Let's see what we're doing. Hardware inventory, software inventory. Um, just looking to see if any of these things map. If there was like a, I feel like asset inventory kind of does it all together for us. So we're pretty good there. Um, let's move on to the next thing, I guess. I would argue policies and procedures, even though it doesn't say policies and procedures anywhere in here, policies and procedures are basically, um, where's, how do I make this full screen? Policies and procedures, guys, is how you achieve like fundamental stuff, right? So we're going to do, policies and procedures to get access to 2FA, network encryption, et cetera. Um, I, I would almost argue that the CIS 18 doesn't explicitly say policies and procedures because it almost implicitly assumes that you're doing policies and procedures for all of the controls that the 18 calls for. I bet you if you dug in a little bit, um, if you dug in a little bit, you would actually see that CIS 18 says to do policies and procedures at some point. Looking at chat really quick. I see uh, Let's Go Nick says he finally got a day off to catch a live stream. Wow. Nice job, Nick. Happy to have you here. Yep. Thank you, Alex Goodwin's in chat. Definitely appreciate Alex Goodwin being here. Definitely. Yeah, so a framework isn't prescriptive. Hey, Peter Lake. Uh, uh, um, a framework isn't prescriptive. It's, it's just a framework. It's supposed to give you... A, a, you know, a beginning. Now, just for the way the game works, I want to show you that we have used all of our uh, assets and we and our money here. That's our budget. We are essentially a CISO. Is this free to install is the question. Um, so I want to tell you, there have been some updates lately. Um, there, hold on. Give me a second. I can tell you I can tell you there has been some um, updates since I last uh, played and was talking to Clint, who's the CEO of the company. And I think there was something around that. So let me just see really quickly, okay? 
Um, so Threat Gen has just rolled out the Pro Portal version of the game that is more web responsive, does support 16 by 10 resolution, and has mobile device support, which is fantastic. Uh, there is a free plan in the pay as you can option. Thank you, Clint, for being there um, on stream. Clint, uh, what is the URL if someone wants to go check out that free version, pay as you can? Please let us know. Diamond W over on LinkedIn wants to know. <laughs> Alex, good one. That's so funny. All right, so let let, let me um, quickly go back to the CIS 18. We've done these two. Data protection. Now, this is... Um, I want to say data protection is around, let's see. Oh, all of our assets are tied up anyways. So we're going to have to wait on that. But let me, let me do this really quickly. I'm going to do CIS top 18 controls, file type PDF. And I'm just going to pull up a random one. Okay. And I know that this might be a little bit of an eyesore. Uh, but this this uh, um, document right here does. I just randomly pulled this off Google. Does provide some uh, information around that. So data protection looks like uh, you do the policies and procedures, obviously. Um, a data inventory, so that's like data, you know, like hardware, software, and data inventory. Data across control list, data retention, disposal of data, encrypting data on end user devices and a maintained data classification stream, encrypt data on removable media, data in transit, data at rest, data segmentation, DLP. Okay, cool. So we looks like we understand what is going on here with that. All right, so our next moves are going to be, let's see, oh, not hard in RDP. Where is encryption? I feel like there's some encryption ones. Encrypt network traffic. That's not really data protection. That's network protection. Um, hmm. I don't know if there's an exact match for data protection. I have not put the, the gateway firewall in the queue yet, Melina P. I did not put in the gateway firewall yet for this reason. According to CIS 18, I am not doing that until step 12, <laughs> right? I mean, you could, I guess you could argue a little bit, uh, but I don't really see one around network defenses until we get to 13, honestly, 13 network monitoring and defense. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it easy. Uh, I don't see anything that maps directly to data protection, so we're going to just kind of wipe that one right now. And we will be looking and concerning ourselves with secure configuration of enterprise assets and software next. Okay. So let's go ahead and pass the turn. Uh, we're still in our action queue waiting for these turns to finish. We got one more turn, so let's go ahead and pass the turn. That's okay, Alex. So we've done our policies and procedures in asset inventory. So we've got our, our step one. Our, our one and two of our controls are completed at this point. Uh, data protection is kind of implicit. We don't have an explicit uh, item in the game around that. Now we're gonna do secure configuration of enterprise assets and software and look at account management. So let's go over here to the game. Let's take a look here. Two-factor auth is going to be around access control, so that hasn't happened yet. Data protections, um, I would say encrypt network traffic. We're protecting the data on the network, so that maps there. Um, SDLC code review, that is not really data protection. Secure configuration, though, I, I could argue secure configuration in SDLC, right? You want to have, you want to have standard controls around SDLC. So that could be one. Strong Wi-Fi would also be data security at the network level. Backup process. This is more business continuity. 
Uh, we're not ready to install the sim yet. We're really doing nothing around um, video surveillance. You know, I'm going to do video surveillance only because I'm going to make the argument that data protection... Uh, Gregory Jones, I'll answer your question in a second. Uh, I'm, data protection is is media protection, making sure data doesn't walk out the door, making sure USB drives, etc. So I'm going to install video surveillance to kind of meet that um, data protection need. Right? So we've got inventory one, two, and three done. Four we're looking at and five we're about to move into. So this is good. This is good. Let's keep going. Now, Gregory Jones asked a question. Hold on, let me figure out what I'm gonna do with my one last asset here. I can't do SDLC yet. I will do a uh, strong Wi-Fi simply because um, it's kind of like data protection. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Greg Gregory uh, Jones asks a framework would be considered an administrative control. So, uh, and it's administrative, not administration. So arguably you wouldn't think of a framework typically as a control, but if you look at NIST cybersecurity framework, for example, there is um, under the protect uh, category, there is a section for uh, like, program management and risk assessment and stuff like that. So there is controls to make sure that you have a chief information security officer or somebody accountable for cybersecurity. There are things that make sure that you are, um, you have staff that map to certain skills in cybersecurity and then that you are approaching cybersecurity in an organized fashion. Nothing says you need to do a framework, but but by using a framework, you are adhering to the best practices in, in doing that. So it's kind of an administrative control, Gregory Jones, but not explicitly. All right, Justin Rower, welcome to the party, Justin. Where are you, Justin? Let's bring you up here. Justin, welcome to the community. Love having you here. All right, so let's look at what we're doing here. We're about half an hour in. We've got strong Wi-Fi. We've got one person available. Um, our encryption network traffic is going to lighten up next turn. Uh, I think account management is our next uh, control. Uh, just screwing, uh, scrolling down here, you can see... Uh, let's see. Device lockout on portable users. Configure trusted DNS servicers. Uh, manage default accounts. Man implement and manage a firewall on servers. Firewall on end user devices. Do not see firewalls on the network yet. Okay, establish and maintain a secure config process for network infrastructure. I'm going to give that to us to do the network firewall, the gateway firewall. Boom, baby. All right, now we still got one person available one asset to work on and we're kind of in the account management phase over here so looking at this we're looking at cis 18 right now implementing it in the threat gen red versus blue portal we also want to do um end user workstations unique passwords disable government accounts Restrict privileged access and centralized account management. Okay, we can do all of these. Let me know if you're uh, able to continue to see us in chat. I'm getting a notification that we're having network connection issues, which is a bit of a concern. All right, here we go. Account management. We're not, that's not 2FA, that's access control. Account management. Hmm. Oh boy, we don't have anything around that yet. All right, well, there's nothing really around that and we only have one person to deploy. So like I said before, 
don't don't let one thing stop you from doing the next thing. So the control six is access control management. This is where the like this is the one that most end users are familiar with. Oh my god, why do I have to change my password every 90 days? You're terrible. All right, so two FA is where we're gonna go next. Um create a backup process, install a sim. So gosh, we currently don't have enough resources to do the next control. So let's move on over here. Continuous vulnerability management program and audit log management. So can we do vulnerability management? Vulnerability mapping, we can do that. So let's do vulnerability mapping, that's a start. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. All right, good to hear you, have you here, Justin, exactly. Yeah, frameworks are meta controls, I agree. Network traffic encrypted, nice job, everybody. So we've got a nice little firewall. Now remember, um, I wanna point out that control four is secure configuration. So now that we have assets in our environment, you know, if they're not properly configured, like if they have default creds or patches are available, we need to implement that. Information security, here's another fun fact, Justin. Justin Rohr, you're gonna be my avatar today. I'm gonna to be talking to you mostly. Do not think of these controls as like, once you complete it, it's done. Information security, cybersecurity, it's very cyclical. This is why it's a job. This is why it's a field. You are constantly touching and maintaining. This is why you need to stay constantly engaged and up to date on what's going on. It is not a set it and forget it, right? You need to be mindful all the time. Misconfigurations can happen. Shadow IT can happen. New security vulnerabilities can be discovered. You need to maintain it all the time, all right? All right, so 2FA is what we're going for. Next, we're gonna uh, free up some resources next turn. We do have to do something with our one, our one asset. Um, let's go ahead and prep. Um, let's go ahead and prep and do uh, backup processes. Okay, and end the turn. Oops, let me do this. All right, we've, we did our vulnerability mapping, nice job. You can see we've got some, some things discovered, right? No patch available yet. So we're kind of doing our vulnerability management. Access control is our next thing. So let's do our 2FA. This is 2FA, this is where you got password and a um, a second factor, whether it's biometric, it's like your face, whether it's a key card, whether it's a UB key, whether it's a two factor uh, text message you get, whatever it is, go ahead and pass the turn. We're also gonna implement uh, uh, strong password policies, which also map in to enforce strong passwords. We're gonna go ahead and do that. So you can see that that maps in into where we are right now, access control management, account management, strong passwords. So we're at we're at like level six right now. We're gonna have to revisit four for secure configuration of enterprise assets pretty soon. Also, we've done a little bit of vulnerability management, but like very, very junior. Like we don't have a vulnerability management program in place. By the way, our end users, our endpoints, they are still quite vulnerable. We haven't really done anything to hook those people up, right? So Carl, Carl's still running around doing what Carl does. Ooh, we got some budget. Nice, guys. Congratulations. Let me, let me, uh, nice. So we got some cashish. We're doing our strong passwords. Things are looking pretty good. All right. Secure configuration. So, um, let's see, what are we doing here? Now we can't do a full vulnerability assessment without doing safe testing methods of the industrial control systems because we'll accidentally knock them over, which is no good um, for anybody. Let's go back to the CIS 18. If you're using a framework, you really should adhere to it. Um, all right, so audit log management, that would be the SIM. This is where a SIM resides, number eight, control eight. A SIM is a security incident and event management platform. It's basically where all the telemetry goes. Uh, so in, a SOC analyst can look at it, right? SIMs are used by SOC analysts all the time. So let's go ahead and get that SIM installed. 
Yes. Jerry, the password update was recently changed. So how does that fit in? The password update. Are you implementing based off the IG group? So Brandon Poole, Brandon Poole asks if we're implementing off the IG group. So Brandon, can you, so I forgot about this. So you'll notice on the inventory, uh, on the controls, it says there's five safeguards. So like if you were to drill in, you could see like, this is one, this is two, right? So um, for control six, there's eight safeguards. So that would map, I bet you there's, you know, 6.8 and then, and then that's it, right? 6.8. Then within that, there are these IG levels, which are maturity levels essentially, right? So for maturity level one, and I forget what IG stands for, uh, Brandon, but it's essentially like maturity level. So IG one, you only do two of the five safeguards. IG two, you do four. And then IG three, you typically do all the safeguards. So seven out of seven, um, six out of six, 12 out of 12, you can see. Um, and, and this allows you to like, Remember how I said earlier, you don't need to implement all the controls by, before moving on to the next one. This is what I'm talking about. You can um, approach it in a staged fashion to be able to do it right. So thanks a lot, uh, Brandon Poole, for being in chat and saying what's up. If you guys don't know Brandon Poole, uh, he's over at Panopticeye. Uh, great, great uh, blue practitioner, just overall cybersecurity professional. Great guy. Um, he's been on the stream before. All right, so... I got a little confused. Let me see what um what we're doing. We did the sim, uh, email and web browser protection. We also need to do, um, we need to push telemetry to our audit logs and do continuous vulnerability management and secure configuration. So let's go ahead and start grinding on those things. So I'm gonna quickly do backups for everything. Now remember, if you have backed up an infected machine, well, guess what? <laughs> You're gonna restore an infected backup. All right, so we have to, oop, change default creds. This is control four, right? Control four, secure configuration. We don't need that up in our environment. All right, now we do want to start doing log collection and analysis right on that audit log management that's important oh install antivirus something missing system patches something missing engineering workstation now it doesn't say this in the cis 18 but you can't patch all the things all at once you can't you can't flip a switch and change default creds on everything all at once so what you need to do is prioritize engineering workstation is the most critical asset or one of the most critical assets in my environment right now so i prioritize doing this, right, over say, you know, Michael, the sales guy's computer, all right? So engineering workstation and this guy right here. So system patches, we're gonna apply those. So we're doing our configuration, or excuse me, our control six, which is secure configuration. Go ahead and pass the term. All right, so we we did our yeah. Sorry, Greg Jones. Um, Nightshade asks. So all in all, this program guides us through steps we would take in a day to day work. Yes, it, it can be used for that. This is a this is as close to like a simulation as can be. Like you know, there are games out there that you do cyber stuff, but this one, Threat Gen, one of the one of the key differentiators of Threat Gen Red versus Blue is that it's very close to reality as far as like. No, you know, like there isn't bubble gum popping in and, you know, like funny thing. Like this is like a network diagram and how you, you know, and the active adversary AI is throwing incidents at you or events that you'd have to deal with in, in real life. All right. So let's keep running here. Um, I do want to look at the control because I want to... Malware defenses and email and web protections. Okay, malware defenses would be like EDR. And that's really where I want to get going. Okay, so let's start deploying EDR on workstations. So uh, for me, let's start with our critical assets, which would be these guy, these uh, engineering workstations. And um, so system hardening, you know, that is secure configuration. So we have to do this first 
before malware defenses technically. All right. Yeah, Justin Loken, passwordless is really the future. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. I'm gonna start moving a little quicker. All right, so we got EDR installed, endpoint detection installed. Very nice, very nice. Um, let's go ahead and keep doing it on our critical assets. And, um, uh, let me do, I'm gonna do system hardening. Okay, pass the turn. Yeah, password vaults really are um, the bridge until passwordless. Although once we go passwordless, threat actors are just going to discover a way to like circumvent passwordless as well, right? All right, so let's let's look really quickly at. Um, so IG one is the first two of Control nine. Control nine is. First two of control nine is ensure only fully supported browsers and email clients are used and DNS filtering. Okay, that isn't really part of what we can do here. So we get to pass on that. Malware defenses is control 10 and we do one, two, and three. So control 10, one, two, and three. Deploy anti-malware, configure uh, updates for signatures, auto run. Uh, so, okay, cool. So let's do this really quickly. And uh, for the sake of time, I'm trying to move a little quicker. We need EDR on all of the things, okay? Um, oh boy, this, this AD machine's busted, huh? So let's do that. Let's install antivirus and let's do endpoint detection there. Let's pass the turn. So I'm going to get EDR on everything. Nice. AV rolled out. Look at us go. So that's done. EDR there. EDR there. Okay, I think we've got EDR on all the things, okay? So, oh, there's system hardening on that guy. We do need visibility, but system hardening is quite important. So let's go ahead and pass the turn. After malware defenses, we're gonna go into data recovery, which would be um, in the IG four out of five. Oh, no, no, yeah, four out of five, wow. So this one's hyper important. So data recovery. Establish recovery process, automated backups, recovery data, and an isolated recovery instance. So like uh, an alternate environment. Okay, let's do that. All right. <laughs> James Randolph, that's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's keep rolling here. Uh, we do need to create IR procedures. That's fine. And let's continue hardening hardening these things. I think they're all hardened. We do need to start doing log collection and analysis too. Are we getting close to um, system patches? I hope we get close to network segmentation soon because geez. Um, all right, so the backups. So we are actually, um, did we already finish that? IR procedures would be those that backup continuity. We've already got backups done. This is looking good. Uh, network security would be good to have. Um, the next one is network infrastructure and networking defenses, which is where we're going to do our um, network segmentation. So that's a big one. Let's get that rolling. Future is, is the Bing AI being mean to us all when we do something stupid. <laughs> that's right. Oh, hey, as as predicted, as predicted, not that it was like a hot take or anything. Mercy! As predicted, I saw in this morning's news that Microsoft is beginning to explore selling advertising space into AI chat. So when you ask like AI, like, oh, hey, like, explain to me like I'm five, what EDR is or endpoint detection and response. And Bing could say something like, oh, EDR or endpoint detection and response is a standard security technology deployed on endpoints to detect malicious activity and alert security professionals of a compromised asset. For 30% off Carbon Black as an excellent EDR solution, click here. 
like this is where we're going. You are going to be all, you, we're going to be, dude. At, Great cash, homie. We are going to get peppered with advertisements. It's going to be gross. I, I'm not looking forward to it. All right, so let's pass the turn. All right, ooh, IR procedures. Yeah, baby. Okay, so we've got one one person. What we really need to do is ICS safe testing methods so we can do a vulnerability assessment on our environment. I'm also gonna be doing um, our network segmentations coming up. Yay! Toasty. Network segmentation, there you go. Threat actor's gonna threat act, not on iWatch. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Look at me, look at me, look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now, threat actors. Come at me, brah. All right, so continuing on with CIS 18. We are playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue. You can go to threatgen.com to learn more. Um, we've done our network uh, network monitoring, so we need NIDs. We need network intrusion systems all up in this piece, okay? NIDs, NIDs, NIDs. Also, let's check for misconfigurations. All right, well, let's do log collection and analysis on these devices too. But we do need NIDs. We also need to harden the crap out of this terminal server, like ASAP, right? Let's go ahead and install EDR on that. Let's go ahead and install EDR on that. Let's harden this baby and pass the turn. All right, questions are coming in. This is good. Ooh, gross, password. Password with a sticky note. All right, continuing on uh, security awareness training. My favorite. Let's roll on that, baby. Uh, but first, we do need to do NIDs and... Um... All right, let's do NIDs in this environment and... Uh, we'll do log collection and analysis uh, here. We're running into the old age old problem of more problems than people. Uh, we're, we're strapped for um, resources. All right, so threat monitoring, NIDs. Let's put, we could put NIDs everywhere and knock that out. Okay, let's keep going. We're slowly building great security posture. So we gotta do log collection and analysis on all the firewalls. That's all done. Log collection and analysis on the NIDs devices, which is kind of silly that should be happening anyways, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. All right, so you can see, um, let's look for, um, let's do, let me, hold on, crap. I wanna do a vulnerability assessment now. This would map to Hold on one second. We've done AC ICS safe testing methods. So we not we can do a vulnerability assessment. Now we also want to do security awareness training, but vulnerability assessment is earlier on in the process than security awareness training, so we have to do that first. We don't have enough money to do it, so I'll do security awareness training since we have a budget issue. And I will request budget from leadership. That's also not a control technically in the CIS 18, but you will see it in NIST CSF around making sure that um, the cyber program is funded. Oop, compromised asset detected. Oh, that's not good. This is really not good. This is a bad one. This is a bad one. Let's go ahead and activate IR. Although I will show you, this this sucks. <laughs> um, we're gonna wait one turn or else security awareness training won't have activated, unfortunately. This is a bad one to get owned though. Oh, I think I could have activated IR. Okay, so security awareness training implemented. Let's go ahead and activate IR. Maybe we get our budget. If we can do a couple things that take just one turn to resolve, 
we can do that. Um, change default creds. That would be a good one. And uh, oh boy, ay, ay, ay. all right. Let's change the default creds. Well, I don't want to change the default creds on that. Let's do this. All right. So IR is going to activate and. Okay, here we go. We did get budget. Yay. Great cash, homie. Okay, we got that. We are in IR, so let's go ahead and um, let's disconnect this asset from the internet. Let's gather forensics and let's clean the asset, okay? This is going to take a couple turns. Uh, I agree 100%. Yeah. Like it. And, oh, ransomware infection. That's not good. That's not good. So we are going to go ahead and replace the bat, the asset as well. Well, hold on. I am doing forensics on it. Um, that's going to resolve. So we'll replace the asset afterwards and then deactivate IR. Oh, and then I have to reconnect this freaking thing. It sucks. I'm going to lose a turn on this one. All right, PNL dropped to 75%. That's not good. You can see right here our PNL is going down. That means we're getting data exfil. We are in IR right now, so we're going to go ahead and reconnect this sucker to the network and deactivate e IR. Um, it sucks. I shouldn't have disconnected it from the network because honestly, it it takes like a full turn to do that. Uh, now I got to deactivate IR, which is like a whole waste of a turn. Stupid. All right, here we go. So we're back on top, baby. Uh, now, it doesn't say this in the CIS 18, but because um, this was a uh, particularly nasty um, infection over here, I do want to deploy USB security in this environment uh, on that device. I'm basically, just give that device a little bit of extra love. I'm also going to create a restore point since we just replaced the asset, so we know that it's a known clean instance. I'm going to deploy USB security there as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a guys. I'm not opposed to paying for ChatGPT. Like, pay for you know, pay for what you get, right? That's a very valuable asset. All right, I'm just gonna deploy USB. All right, and you can see our interaction log vulnerability assessment is about to be done, completed. Now you see this opened up a whole bunch of stuff. This vulnerability assessment maps to Control Seven, right? Continuous vulnerability management. Continuous is the keyword here. Continuous, continuous, continuous. You've constantly got to be doing it, right? Vulnerability scanning all the things. So now we can look in and say, oh, default creds on the Great Way Firewall. That's not good. Um, system patches on this guy. That's not good. System patches on that guy. That's not good. So, and this is like, guys, uh, CISOs typically um, don't last long. 12 to eight, uh, 18 months has been on average. It's bumped up to about 24 months. But the reason is a lot of times you build a program and it's exciting and it's sexy to build a program. And then it becomes rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It, it loses a lot of its zeal. Um, and, you know, I'm just saying that's why some people leave, right? Right now we're just in operation monitoring mode. Like we're, we're just doing, this is the grunt work. This is what the actual grunt work is of being an information security um like CISO or practitioner, right? It's just going through and grinding. All right, so we go ahead, we won. So uh, what's our winning sound? Nicely done, everybody. So let's take a look at how we did as a blue team. Total issues, we had two down, two breaches, no down time. Uh, we detected half of them and resolved all of them, which is kind of funny. I guess we didn't have to detect the ransomware incident. Um, it detected it for us. Uh, we discovered about half of our vulnerabilities, remediated about 14%. That's actually pretty average uh, from an industry. We got some budget, so our, our board didn't suck. Our CFO didn't suck, uh, understood the value we were providing. And we, we uh, utilized staff at 95%, so not a bad day. Looking at the red team, we can see that the red team um, 
They tried some social engineering, several, a hun- like five different social engineering attacks, and they struck on one spirit fish. So that might be how they um, got that historian. Um, I don't see any USB attacks. Uh, no USB drops, so that USB security was totally not necessary. And they had um, discovered about some of our environment. Let's look at what they could see. So they had our, our firewall. Okay, wow. They owned our firewall, which makes sense because um, it had default creds on it. They probably did a password attack on it. All right. Well, that has been uh, that was good. That was good. So I hope you enjoyed um, the, the past hour. That flew by incredibly quickly. But what we did in the last hour was look at the CIS 18 controls and I demonstrated how you would implement them in an environment. This was a manufacturing environment. Based on what I saw, you could you could imagine it was probably between like um, 100 to 250 employees with uh, most of the employees being more uh, assembly line manufacturing staff. I'd probably say 75 knowledge workers, uh, you know, people, hands on desk, sales, people, finance, et cetera. Uh, IT. Uh, we implemented the, the CIS 18. We did not get through 18 controls. We got probably to 14, which is not a problem. It, you don't you don't build out a framework overnight, guys. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. You have to be deliberate. Um, you have to have forecasting so you can see like what your budget needs are, what um, hardware is going end of life, what software are you entering into the, a new European market as GDPR play in. It's a very complicated environment like when people say infosec is complicated yes hell yeah it is right there's no easy button though you just need to lean into it learn 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 Uh, i've been at this for 20 years and there's still a ton i don't know so don't be overwhelmed by it just lean in and start drinking from the fire hose we've been playing threat gen red versus blue go check it out at threatgen.com if you're interested in learning more we do this every single Wednesday around 11, 11.30 a.m. So if you got value out of it, hit the subscribe button to be in the bell so you'll be made aware when we go live for the next Threat Gen Red versus Blue. I'm Jerry Ozier. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, stay secure.